All right, well, welcome everybody. <laughs> Siri, take us off here. All right, so like I was saying, we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be doing this weekly. And the concept came from what I believe is a need because I get a lot of times I get, I get questions around um, how do I build a team or what do I do to build a team or I'm stuck trying to build a team. A lot of times agents are in production and they're trying to build a team and they just are totally overwhelmed with, with where to start. Um, and so that's where the concept came together. The other thing is you can see from our shirts that we have on, which thank you to my husband for reminding me to put this on because I had something else on today. Um, <laughs> Jordan and I met in a uh, kind of a deeper level back in what, like June in Park City at an event, right? And I was talking about my model and then he became very curious because he was also, I don't know if you, I think you were somewhat working on community then, right? Yeah, we, we, a, were, we were mid, we were mid swing into the idea about a month away from being able to launch. Okay. So I think your ears perked up when you heard what I was doing and you were, you had a lot of questions around that. Right. And so mm -hmm. we started talking about it. Um, and so this is where it all formulated is how can we help you guys get through some of these pain points? Um, how can we bring in the experts? So it's not just always going to be Jordan and I that are going to be talking about what we do. We'll bring you some value around that or where we've been and different things, but we're also going to be bringing people in every week. So um, the goal is to really get you guys a lot of value out of this and, um, you know, to grow the following so that people really have a place to go because I don't believe that there is something out there right now that goes to this like deep mastermind level with teams. So do you have anything yeah, to add? I think yeah, I think the the key here is there's there's two things. One, um, both Siri and I have uh, spent years building our teams, and and recently we've expanded to uh, a, into a place where we are now not just serving our teams, but we're um, we're our structures can support other teams, and we're coaching other teams and coaching other team leaders. And uh, what we have the pain that we've gone through and building a team because you 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 hear about the the law of threes, uh, ones and threes. So once you get the three people, you have to break through to the next level. Once you hit 10 people, you have to break through a ceiling. Once you get the 30 people, you have to break through. And all these different ceilings create a lot of challenges. Um, and I like to think in the world of uh, Disney and how do we get fast passes and have to, and skip the line and not have to go through the pain and the challenges. And so whether you're building a team of two people or a hundred people, we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about systems and we're going to be talking about structure people. Um, if you're leading a team, you're dealing with people and, and what comes with people sometimes is challenging. But again, it's not going to just be Siri and I. We, we're, we're scheduling out uh, a series of, of guests each week that are leading teams at a high level. And our, our hope is that they can bring some value uh, to the group but also we can help serve these team leaders by helping unpack maybe a, a place where they're stuck. And so uh, we're all learning different things. We love collaboration. We, we think that the greatest way to uh, grow our businesses is to collaborate and share. And, um, and that's exactly what Siri and I are doing. We're running two different businesses in two different areas. Um, our models are similar, but not at the same time. Uh, so there, because, you know, we have different strategies in that, but uh, I think there's just our goal here and our hope of launching this today is to help us all get further together. So the more interaction, the better, uh, the more faces we see on Zoom, uh, the better. Uh, we like faces, hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to get to know you guys and see you guys. For some of you in uh, the West Coast, I understand it's early. Look at Look at, we've got coffee drinking. We've got that going on, or maybe it's tea. I don't know. I drink tea. <laughs> so Damn. Siri, Siri, give us a snapshot of your uh, team uh, size yeah. production for 2022, just to kind of give people perspective. I mean, there might be people on here that are leading something much greater, and that's that's awesome too. And so this yep. isn't a measuring contest as much as it is uh, mm -hmm. just to give your resume a little bit. Yeah. And so I, yeah, so a little bit about me, but I also want to emphasize like what you just said, like 
you literally could be a team of two people and that could literally be you and maybe your TC, right? So I wanna emphasize that the word team, I think some kind, sometimes people think that it has to be many, many people, but it literally can be you and you know a TC, for example, or an assistant, something like that. Um, so just a quick little bio on me is I, um, I've been in real estate for over 20 years. I um, am a mom of five kids. I have five boys, so I'm a total boy mom. If you guys look at my Instagram story, you'll see what I just posted, which totally makes me a boy mom. My Instagram handle is not on this one. Um, I'll put it in the chat. But um, I sold real estate for 16 years, pretty much solo. I did have a TC. And I got totally exhausted with all of that stuff and I hit a wall and I said, what am I gonna do next? Am I gonna go sell products on Etsy or am I gonna like go and do something else with real estate? Like I literally hit a wall with everything. And the cool thing is, is I met um, up with someone who I knew, hi Tina, <laughs> I see you with your beanie on. <laughs> yeah, guys, hi. What's yeah, up? I, I went to the hospital this morning so I couldn't really get ready for this. So good morning. <laughs> It's all good. Um, so anyways, I met up with Tina and Tina has run teams and she's um, done a lot of coaching and different things. And so her and I got together and we started a team. And so this has been about four and a half years in the making. And my team went from, you know, just Tina and I basically, so two, um, to what it is today, which is with employees and we have some virtual assistants. I think we're over 80 total. So we've gone from that to that in about four and a half years. We've also gone through four name changes. And um, so we've had a good time with all that stuff. But what I remember is when I said, hey, let's start a team, I literally was looking for a roadmap, like a, I was like, where is this like team booklet? Like, how do you build this team? <laughs> and um, the other thing is, is I like to say, when you build a team, you're literally building, like we are builders, right? So you're building a team. And I like to say that I'm building a house of bricks because um, my emphasis and I think one of my superpowers is our operations team. And so really building that core operations team is the house of bricks with stuff. So that's a little background on me. Um, and basically today what we're going to do is go over our, you know, our different models that Jordan and I are going to share because I think our models are pretty cool and it's different from your traditional teams that a majority of the people out there are doing. So I don't, Jordan, do you want to share anything? I'm yeah, going to share the screen too. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give a little um, synopsis of me. I've been in real estate for six years coming this February. Uh, and, and I've learned a lot in a really uh, short amount of time. In fact, I did the math recently. Um, of building a team I've invested not I'm not talking team money. I'm talking personal investment, uh, about $3 million into figuring this out. And I don't want that for anybody. Um, I'd rather, again, give the fast pass. But, you know, I'm happy to say our, our team uh, did around $220 million this year in volume. And we have about 40 people, uh, part of our organization. Uh, we have 10 full-time staff, six VAs and about 24 agents. And um, yeah, we we recently just uh, announced a, a rebrand. Um, we have been the Jordan Terrell Group and now we're expanding our footprint. Uh, we launched Community. So Community is really our brand that will support teams and agents uh, in the in the Colorado market. And so um, we're, we're diving in deep and we're, uh, and we're expanding and, and, and so, what, what I, I think, you know, again, I've always had collaboration. I've always had coaching. I've always had people around me. Um, there's a lot of brilliant minds out there. And so our hope with this whole group, again, is to bring the perspectives together. And uh, Siri and I can be uh, narrators, facilitators, but there's just some really, really sharp people around uh, uh, our communities here that we can pull together. So um, Siri, uh, yeah, you're gonna take us through just our various models. Yeah, so I've got some really pretty slides. Um, for anybody that knows me, I'm a super visual person. So when you come to these meetings, most likely you're going to see some pretty things. <clears throat> um, thank you, Liv, my marketing creative director. Um, so, <clears throat> and I also am I'm looking at the chat right now and I see that there's um, some comments. So I love it. 
and I love all the good mornings. And I, I really want to emphasize again, cameras on, let's get to know each other. Let's collaborate. You guys put some messages in here and we'll keep an eye on some of your messages because we want to talk about this stuff with you. Um, I also want to say too, that if you, um, if you want to chime in at any time, like this is called a mastermind, right? So um, chime in, like just, we can chat about anything you want. Um, so like Jordan said, he's in Colorado, he's in Atlanta right now, but Colorado, and then I'm in, over in California and San Diego. And um, so we kind of went over this weekly format's gonna be team leaders from around the country. I already have us booked pretty much through maybe mid March with some really top team leaders that are gonna be coming on and sharing um, different things with you guys. Um, so we'll have Q and A, um, and then we have some feedback from the speakers and then a little reminder, we love your faces. So again, if you can keep your cameras on, we won't judge if it's earlier, you can throw a hat on like Jordan, right? Um, okay, so our team structures. So I, I run the brand realty. So we call ourselves, we pretty much say the brand, but it's the brand realty team. And the journey, like I said, from a traditional team. So traditional team to me is kind of like that 50 50 split. It's the team leads information. So I used to be the Siri. I used to be a lot of names, but we'll go to the last one. The Siri home team was the last one, right? So it was it had my name in it. And so a lot of times you see that stuff. And I'm not here to knock that at all. I think that there's a place for everybody. I think that could be a great idea. I've also seen some teams where it's specific to like a state or a community or, or what well, community, right? Um, things like that. But so what I decided, though, and I decided this earlier this year, is I wanted to make it so that our team could be more about the agents and less about me. And I wanted to have a structure where they could all thrive from within. And so <clears throat> this is just a glimpse into um, our structure. We have a traditional team model and we have um, what we call our marketing team. And what's cool about that is that um and then we also just have our brokerage side but even being at just the brokerage side we have things that we do to help them and so we have um you know different value adds so that we can keep everybody together and so what's cool is with each path there's different things that you get and so what i like to show oh sam has a logo i didn't know that yet that's cool um <clears throat> what i like to emphasize is also on your traditional teams most teams have the one logo and it's not about you know these agents having their own branding and i really think it's cool because you could see these are some of the agents on my team um and this one right here misky real estate's new so i think that's really cool he's from england he's actually flying there today i think um but they have their own logos and what they do is they just incorporate those logos into the branding that we already have and so it's really it's really allowing them to thrive from within and still have that organizational structure because a lot of times, um, you know, it's it's hard. Like Jordan said, it's, he spent $3 million on building this out so they can like plug those things in. So we have a breakdown of different things that they have with each option. And, um, you know, it really just kind of gives a good pathway. Does anybody have any questions on that? Open that up. Quick question. So sure. on your splits, is that in addition to the fees they pay real or is that yeah. fees with? Yeah. So um, basically what happens is the split to real is off the top. So whether it's real or any brokerage, right? So wherever you mm -hmm. are, the brokerage gets paid. And so that split gets paid. And then um, where we are, there's a cap. So they they basically pay their $12,000 cap every year. Um, that's just taken out from the top. And then from within, the rest of this breaks down. Now on our internal um, splits, there's no cap. So, you know, so all that goes to pay, pay for, and I don't have it on here, but like our, you know, our operations team, we run at about, uh, someone help me out. Are we at about 13 people, I believe? Um, 13 people with operations. We have a really cool office, you know, all that stuff. So basically all that stuff goes back. I like to call it like a co-op, right? So it's a co-op that we're collecting all that in so that we can provide all that value out. But yeah, that's 
that's the how how the structure works for us. So the no cap for coming back into the team if they want to use the brand because they're using all of the support staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So no cap from within. Um, and then you would pay your your real cap. Now, if you're a traditional team model, though, your cap to real is four thousand dollars. So they're paying four thousand dollars, but you can see they're paying the team more. So they're paying the team more, but they're getting a lower cap. So it's really just an option for agents. This one right here, the four thousand dollar cap, is more of kind of your plug and play team. They don't really they don't really care about their own personal branding. Um, maybe they're not doing as many transactions as well. I typically will see our top producers on the twelve thousand dollar market and brand yourself option. So there's um, there's different options for people to pick. And then for our real, if they just go to real only, um, we still do different things like we open up our office at certain, you know, certain times of the day. So because it is a virtual brokerage, mm -hmm. um, we provide those different values for those agents too. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of what I'm leading to. So that's kind of nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're done here, by the way, um, I don't think we went over this, Jordan, but what we're always going to do wherever the guests are is we're always going to give you guys some value on um, something tangible that you can take with you. So whether it's a PDF from the person, it's a link or something like that. At the end, we're going to make sure that you get some sort of value. I will put in the chat our, our web page that has this breakdown so you guys can take a look at it. Um, the other thing for me is um, from within, we also, and this is a little small, but from within, we also then break it down even further. And so we have, here, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for my eyeballs. Maybe you guys can see it all right. Um, we have different options from within. And so we have our elite agents, our traditional, our core, independent, and then real. And so there's different levels that, um, that each of these agents will, will fall into and there's expectations behind that so that we have a document with all those details. But this is a good overview of where they fit with those. And when we say elite, for example, um, we have referral partners like we have Zillow Flex, right? So these are those, those agents who have basically earned their way. You gotta earn your way into that or you come to us and you were already on Flex or different things like that. And so from within, we have different program lead programs for people. And then we have like our independent. And so these agents love us. They love our culture and our style and all that, but they're just very independent. We don't see them too often, but you know, but there's expectations on how many to close and different things too. So do you guys have any questions on that? No. Jordan, it is your turn. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you one thing real quick. I don't know if Olivia or you can add it. Um, you want me to add the rest of that PDF? Nope. Uh, I'm no. just sending you a separate PDF. Uh, I want to. Okay. Uh, I'm emailing it right now. To give me one second. It's always fun when you're not at your computer, and you're at a hotel room working off your. Um, Siri, I emailed it to you because I don't have the ability. I don't have Olivia's. So you let's talk it. about community. I just emailed okay. it, a, a PDF. Okay, I'll send it over. No worries. Uh, so our evolution, uh, we, we've had a traditional team uh, when, you know, Siri's definition of tra traditional team, you know, the 50-50 split, you know, we do leads. Everything that we've always done is, has been summarized by the language of we provide leads, leadership, and leverage. The three things that we do to help agents succeed. And, you know, we built a team of, of 10 staff, uh, six VAs. Uh, you know, we have our director of operations. We have our, my personal assistant slash uh, finance manager. We have uh, three in-house TCs on the listing transaction management side. Uh, we have a past client care coordinator, event planner. Uh, we have our director of agent growth. Um, we have a, we have three in-house ISAs, inside salespeople. Um, and then myself as the, the team leader, you know, CEO, um, and also producer. And so 
we we realized uh, it, it all really occurred to me. Uh, you guys have maybe heard the 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 system out there called EOS entrepreneur operating system we hired an implementer to help us go through this eos process and one of the first questions he asked us what is what is your ideal client and for the first time ever i realized my ideal client wasn't a buyer or a seller it was actually an agent and that's when i realized that i wasn't in the uh, transactional buyer seller business i was in the agent services business as a team leader and that's so when I realized that. Yes. How'd you go through and uh, and and find out that um, what 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 clicked in your mind that you're like, you know what? I hate selling. <laughs> Buyers and sellers, agents are the worst people to sell to. But but I'll just go and 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 take care of those people. Well, I think you know. I think you are who you are. And I think ultimately our gifts are going to lead us where, where we need to be. You know, I, I w I'm a good salesperson. Uh, I'm good at selling houses, but I found that I was actually really good at developing agents. And, and I, I enjoy that. And I, I like the leadership piece. I like the vision piece. I like the, you know, I'm not like Siri. I'm not a very you know, organizational leader. I'm definitely more on the visionary leadership side, but I'm, I think a key thing for all of us as team leaders is recognizing what we're good at and what we're not. The faster we can get to that place, the, the more efficient our growth becomes because we're not doing things that we're not good at. We're surrounding ourselves with people that are good things we're not. And what happens when we focus on the things that we're good at is life becomes more energizing and enjoyable. And so uh, getting out of the way. So yeah, I, I found that I love developing agents and I love creating organizational uh, growth and I love creating systems and processes where people can get their life back. You know, I think that uh, a phrase I often say in real estate is you're screwed if you're successful and you're screwed if you're not, because if you're successful, you know, true definition of wealth is excess of, of time, excess of resources, money, you know, excess of relationships with most real estate agents that are successful have an excess of resources, but no time or people to actually experience it with. And so my problem that I've been trying to solve is how can I help people make lots of money, but also have the time and the, the relationships that they can enjoy that with. Um, Cause that's when people find true happiness. You're screwed if you're not successful because you don't have a plan. You, you set out to be a real estate agent and you, and you, no one gave you a roadmap, no one gave you a plan, no one gave you the way, no one gave you the training, and, and you're not making money, and so you're sad. So I want to feel, figure out how to solve those two problems of helping people get successful, but not get so successful that they can't enjoy it. And so uh, to, uh, to answer your question, I just recognize that I, I'm good at the leadership piece, and so I've leaned into it. Uh, I still do sell, kind of. I have a, a partnership model where I have a few agents that support my my personal production. Um, and yeah, I might not keep a hundred percent of the commission, but 30% of one, 1 1.2 million GCI of my personal production is still not a bad day for a few hours a week of investment. Right. Um, so community, uh, we have expanded Jordan's Herald group into now we're a company that supports, uh, teams, including my own and other agents. Now, you know, we're, we we're, we're literally just launching this. So there's four ways that you can partner with community. You can partner with us by joining a community team, uh, which would be at this point, just my team. Um, you, and, you know, we have the 4K cap with real because we're part of real um, that just comes out of their split, whatever they, if they keep, if they're keeping 50, then they're contributing um, money towards their cap. Uh, we have a salaried agent option, uh, which we now are calling an intern. It's a paid internship. Uh, where they get partnered with a, a senior agent, senior partner. I have a question, uh, Jordan, for your yep. team, right? For join a community team and it's your team. Mm -hmm. So are you keeping the Jordan Terrell team? I know we had kind of talked about that and that was a question. Uh, it, I've gone back and forth on it. At the moment, we haven't made the decision. Um, at the moment, the Jordan Terrell group will still be a flagship team um, powered by community. Uh, at this time um that okay. could change we'll see we'll see okay. we'll see how, how i just goes, but. yeah we've talked about this the reason i say that is for my journey 
is we tried that for a hot minute as well. I mean, and this is just my journey. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong or whatever. But what we found internally was the branding and trying to keep up on um, all the different things that we needed to do with that made it very difficult. And so we ended up just going straight to the brand. That was just our journey directly from an internal process. Sure. Yeah. So we have we have agents. Uh, they get to keep up to fifty percent uh, commission on their on company leads. They keep they keep up to seventy. Oh, hop back up. Uh, they keep back up, up to seventy percent. Back. No, 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 right there. Just leave it. Uh, okay. They keep seven. No, no, up, back. Which one? This one? No, the one before. I don't know. There was one before. That's it. No. This one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Not this one. Am I seeing the wrong thing? Are you seeing community? Yeah, yeah go to the no, next slide. I think the mouse is moving it. What, what do you need, Jordan? Which one? Next slide. Next one. Okay. Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, so our, our, our team model is agents can keep up to 70% of the commission on SOI. Um, we provide all the system structures. They have the team branding of whatever the team that they're part of. Uh, we also have an option where people can join as a community agent with their own branding. And we have a model that uh, they pay their 12K cap to real. Uh, they're not on the team anymore. And they can keep anywhere from 60 to 90 percent of their commission based on on their gci and so uh the way i look at it is if they're a top tier agent my service to them is a ton of leverage transaction management system support uh, technology um if they're a very very newer agent um they're gonna they're gonna pay more money of, of their commission but the way we look at it is if someone partners and becomes part of our community uh, then they are likely someone who's growth minded and wants to scale their business. And so the investment to the newer agent that's only keeping 60% is more time, energy, coaching, leadership than it is leverage, 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 right? Either way, it's about the same investment. If you're selling 400,000 in GCI or whether you're doing 100,000 GCI, they're, they're contributing about the same amount of money, but it's a different expense on my end. And everyone, the goal is growth. You know, we have a set of core values and one of our core values is all around the idea of growth. And so we want to partner with people that are growth minded. The, the other two ways that people can partner with us are, next slide, is okay. you can join as a community team leader. And so we basically built out a model where we can take on a team. So whether that's a team of two or a team of 10, a lot of times I find that uh, teams out there are started by someone who's a really great salesperson. They sell a bunch of houses and then agents are like, oh, wow, I want to sell a lot of houses like that person. And then the team leader over promises, has a hard time building out the back end of it and can't deliver and support the agent. Um, it could be a leadership issue. It could be a systems issue, organizational issue, whatever it might be. Um, we want to take care of all that and go, all you need to do is sell lots of houses and get a handful of agents around you to sell lots of houses and we're going to take care of the back end and help you net 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 lots of money um so our ultimate goal is that we would have you know 10 12 teams i would rather have 10 teams of 10 than 100 agents on my team um then now i'm supporting 10 team leaders um and focusing on coaching them uh, that that would be ideal again giving them the fast pass and so then have to go through the pain so that's that's what the join as a community team leader looks like um, or they can just join us with real. Now, at the end of the day, this could be a way for people to partner with us in four different ways. It could also be a roadmap for our agents on our team, right? We are, a lot of our agents that we're developing, they're growing their businesses, it's a ticking time bomb before they go, wait a second, I'm kind of a badass. I think I want to go do my own thing. I got a calculator out and I want to keep more of this commission. So rather than them having to get the calculator out, I'm creating a path for them to do it on their own and saying, how can I encourage it? I want you to grow your business if that's what you want. And so that's where a lot of this mentality came for. It's like, hey, choose your own adventure. How can I support you? Um, and if they choose their own adventure and it's not a part of community, that's fine too. But at least they had to answer the question, can, is there a roadmap for me here? Um, and, and, and how can I help them get what they want? 
Uh, did you happen to see that other slide or was there any other slides here? Um, or is there, or is there any questions? Is there any questions before we on on everything I just unpacked? Yeah, I've got a question, Jordan. So <clears throat> obviously, I mean, with real, you know, we all have our benefits and whatnot. How does the benefits impact being on this, the different model tiers? Um, you mean like whether they're a solo agent or a part of a team, the, the leads, leadership and leverage, do those, do those change? Yeah. Do, does all that change? I mean, because obviously with real, you know, we have the, I think it's, was it the six K, the six K and then the 12 K and then there's all the different, you know, benefits that come along with that. How does that model apply to the 4K and then the overall with the join as a community team leader? Yeah, so we provide lead leadership and leverage. Um, the only people that would be getting leads, so we'll provide leads and le leverage and le leadership to everyone. So transaction management, uh, listing support, like our, our listings are kind of done for you. The way I look at it is it takes the average agent 60 hours to close a buyer, 30 hours to close a seller of total investment. My goal is to turn that 60 hours of the buyer into 30 hours and the average listing of 30 hours into 10 hours. Because if I can remove time of investment from people's plates and let them focus on the higher dollar producing activities, then their businesses naturally automatically grow. And so our listing team, like you put your order in, I got a listing agreement and things get done. And they just have to negotiate and sell. Um, buyers, obviously, you got to move them around and get them in the houses. So there's always going to be more investment there. Um, so I can't do that for them. Uh, but uh, as far as agents getting leads, it's only agents on teams. So I, I can't give I can't give leads away to just everyone because they're too expensive to generate all those things. Um, and so. Uh, does that answer your question? Um, yes and no. Uh, I mean, yes to the point where, you know, like I see where you're coming at with the leads, you know, coming through it. So as as the team leads come in, or as the 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 teams come in to join the community, um, they provide their own leads. Is that is that what you're saying? Community provides leads to uh, agents that are on any team. Okay. For now, it's just my team. So we have our own lead generation systems. We have our own internal ISAs. Um, leads don't go to agents. They go to ISAs. They turn into appointments. And then they're given to agents on a structure, which I'm getting ready to show you. So if someone joins us as a solo agent, and let's say they're on a 90-10 uh, split, I'm not giving that person leads necessarily. Um, I'm definitely not giving them leads at 90-10 split because it's very expensive to generate leads. Now, if I have another team leader partner with me, um, I will provide that team and that team, that team leader and that team of agents leads as well. Um, and yeah, they're going to pay a split on that. But I, I am, I've structured it to where that team leader gets upside of the profit of the closed lead for partnering with me by training and developing their own agents. They're not. I'm not hosting their team meeting. I'm not trying to figure out their their role play calls and their weekly stuff. They're training their agents. I'm just I'm just providing them leads. Okay, that's uh, what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so cool. so okay. community is the is going to be the lead generation hub. We'll have our own inside sales process. We'll spend we'll make the initial investment on generating the leads and then we'll distribute them. Is is um what we're seeing right now this is all part of community? Is that right? Yes. So the tier one, Rich, I would think kind of equates to our independent model. They're, they want to be part of our team, but they're not getting leads or anything. They're just kind of working their own SOI. Um, so, although his is structured differently, but like it's still, they're not getting any leads, you know. So so here's, Siri showed you uh, their lead structure. Um, this is how we do leads on our team. So every agent that joins our team, I don't care if they're a brand new agent or experienced agent, but if they're on a team getting leads, the way we've created accountability around it is everyone starts at tier two, which means 
they get up to two set pre-qualified appointments uh, per month, which isn't a ton, but it's two opportunities. And so everyone starts at tier two. Now, what happens in over the course of that quarter is going to determine which tier they're in the next quarter. So if they do between one and four, uh, UC closed, under contract closed in 90 days, they would stay in tier two. Um, and then the below things are also what is expected, required, or things that they have to, they get access to. They get access to, they don't get listing appointments in tier two. They don't, they do get Zillow Flex. They get access to our, you know, 40,000 lead database and they can just call through it. Um, they have to go to our Flex pipeline meetings. They cannot hire a showing partner. They do not get client giant um, gifts sent for them. They do get ISA nurturing. Now, let's say that, that in that 90 day period, they close five to 10 properties, either under contract or close. They now get bumped to tier three. They get up to six appointments that month. If they were to close 11 plus, now they're in tier four. We're just pumping them full of appointments because the way I look at it, and I don't know if you guys are basketball fans, I'm not a huge fan, but I like to use this one. But if I'm the point guard and I got Steph Curry on the left side and I got someone else that's not as good on the right side, I know that every time I pass to Steph Curry, it's likely to result in some points. But when I pass to this person over the right side, it like the basketball literally hits them in the head or it goes over their head or they miss it or they didn't even know that they were playing basketball. I'm just not going to reward people that can't close. And so they have to earn their way to it. They have to become better converters. They have to be better uh, database managers, follow up folks. Um, now, if someone does zero closings in 90 days, they are now in tier one. They're, they're not getting leads anymore. And the way our team is structured, you have 90 days to get out of tier one. And if you don't, then you're no longer on our team. But a quick question. So like tier three, you got five to 10, you know, under contract or close. Is that strictly just your team leads or is that also counting SOI? That's strictly, um, no, that's overall production. Overall, okay. Yeah, so if someone's closing 11 plus, they're, they're selling almost three to four homes a month. Um, you can see that, I, and there's there's some other slides. I don't know if if we got all of these other slides over here, um, Olivia. But um, there there's other things that we have expectations, um, standards that we've built out based on tier level, and so these are this is how we you know in the lower tier you're at, the higher the expectations are. The higher tier you're in, the less we go. We kind of just say, I don't care what you do. Just keep doing what you're doing. If you're selling four homes a month, that's amazing. You're almost selling 50 homes a year. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and so we have different meetings. There's meeting standards. There's lead standards. There's uh, activity standards. You know, all these different things that we've created, and we hold people to it. Everybody knows who which tier everybody's at. It's it's kind of like it, not to shame people, but if you're in tier one, it's like man, I got some work to do. So question for you, Jordan, yep. how do you guys track a lot of this stuff? How do you track who's showing up to what? Like, what is your, what's your system for all that? Um, well, first of all, we just know what, what tiers everybody are in. And then um, they, the meeting, like we have a kind of a master team meeting schedule plan. Um, and so if there's a meeting that you're supposed to be at, you're literally on the invite. And if you've accepted the invite and you are showing up, then that's great. If you declined it, then you better be listed on our vacation schedule as out of town because you're expected to be there, right? Because um, I can't tell agents not to take vacations or whatnot, but um, that's how we track it is just whoever's leading that meeting knows who should be there based on what tier they're in. Okay. Um, yeah, because I know for us personally, um, it, you, when you create these things, I think what what becomes um, kind of that like spidering out of okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have all these different options, right? And I I have gone through so many different ways of of having way too much because that's what we do. Like we buy too many things, we plug into many too many things. As team leads, we get excited, 
And so I'm always now coming from like, how can we simplify this? Like, how can we make this so that it's, it's easy, it's simple, um, and that we can have good reporting around what we're doing and how can we track that? And so that's one thing that I can say <clears throat> when you have these models and you have people in different buckets, um, because you want them to succeed and you want them to grow if they want to, right? Because some agents just want to stay where they are and that's okay, their goals are going to be their goals. Um, but it's tracking that stuff because a lot of times what I see is our more senior agents, which they've earned it, but they will, they will kind of, you know, they're out selling homes, but they will not always show up to these things. And so what I have found is really trying to create that balance of how do you have expectations, but still, you know, have the tracking around what you need for them to be, to remain there. To basically remain in those tiers right to remain in those for us it's you know like the elite status right mm -hmm. so um that has i mean you guys just launched too right so i can just say that that's been something for us is just trying to keep keep with the accountability yeah so we, what we expect yeah, this is our team structure yeah community is something that's like bigger overarching that will serve our team community is our staff, it's our systems, it's our tech stack, it's our transaction management, it's our client events, it's our uh, coaching, it's our leadership, it's our, all the things. Um, but this is what we've built and now we're expanding it and sharing it with others. Now, the thing I'll say that is really helpful for us is that I, I, I truly look at our agents as partners. We're, we're partners in a business. And if I do what I'm supposed to do and you do what you're supposed to do, then we both win. Um, now, if either party fails, then the partnership's going to fail, right? And so I, I, we have what we call junior partners, we have partners, and we have senior partners. And it's really based on production. And so if you become a senior partner, you are now mentoring junior partners. That's part of the expectation and the requirement of being a senior partner. Our senior partners earn their way into better commission splits on their SOI. The only way to become a senior partner is to close a certain amount of SOI deals in a year. But we're gonna give you a better split in exchange for you mentoring our junior agents, our junior partners. And the partnership language is, 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 is sprinkled throughout our culture, which is, here's, here's the partnership. I'm gonna do everything I can to help you close one to two deals a month from the company. I'm also going to do everything I can to invest in people to provide leverage to you to buy back 50% of your time. In exchange for that time, I want you to take that 50% time savings and do everything you can to close one to two deals a month from your sphere. If we're doing really well, you should be closing two deals a month, one from each side. If you're doing really, really well, maybe three. If you're really kicking ass, you should be closing four deals a month, almost 50 deals a year, 300K and net earnings. And then the question becomes, how do we move you along and start growing a team around you? Because that's the next step. So we want to we want to help move people to success. And if we're truly partners, we have to treat them like partners, but they have to do their part. So I've got a question for both Siri and for Jordan. Um, going into Jordan, you've got your tier one up into your tier fours. So, and I, I see here the way that you have it structured is, is you've got Zillow Flex going from tier two, tier three, and and so forth and on. Um, do you do you guys open up your um, referral programs to as soon as they make that tier? Is it open to everybody on on the team there? Or, or do you guys structure within your team teams that run specifically on those particular uh, referrals? Um, I guess I, I'm trying to understand the question. So, so like if you have, let's just say, for instance, you have Zillow Flex and then you have uh, your Realtor.coms or you have your Rockets. Is that open from on Jordan's on Jordan's where he's got tier two? Is that opened immediately as soon as an agent makes tier two? Are all those programs opened on tier two? Or do you guys have it broke within um, your models where you have um, the agents that let's just say this agent is specifically for just 
flex and this agent is for rocket or, or is that open all the way across yeah okay so for me i mean jordan you have different lead models and i have other you know there's we we all have different ones we do have flex together i know but for me i have other lead partners who have expectations and so like i think what you're saying rich is we have rocket homes we have veterans united Rick home light we have zillow so my rule on my team is once you're in elite status um you can have no more than two of those because what i found is that when agents have more than two because there's high expectations when they have more than two then they can't keep up with all of that those expectations um that doesn't necessarily mean that if an agent goes to elite which is basically um jordan that would be your tier one right would be equal to my elite um that doesn't mean that they just happen to go oh, on all of our four. programs <clears throat> i'm sorry tier four um that doesn't mean that they go on all of our programs <clears throat> that just means that they're selected and they're invited into those different programs because there also could be a there might not be a need you know our rocket might be full or we might need some agents in certain demographics so hey you know we need agents now in riverside county and so we'll move people up. I will also say too, that we do deviate a little bit from this when I see superstars. So as much as we follow this model, when I see agents that are coming in who just have got it, and you know that as a team lead, you know that they've got something really special, I will, um, <clears throat> I will push them through the process, me personally. So Jordan, I don't know if that's how you do it as well, but I do have exceptions to these rules too. Yeah, I, I, there is moments of customization where you make adjustments uh, as needed. Uh, I, I, I do it as needed, but it can also create uh, situations where you now have deals with everybody and it can get, get really messy. And so I try to stick to standards as much as possible, but the way we do leads, is you know Zillow Flex might represent like fifteen, maybe twenty percent of our lead sources, um, but we, we we like Zillow. We think it's an easy source, um, but that's usually where agents start with us. Is we put them on Zillow Flex, um, but once they get past tier two, then that kind of unlocks all the lead sources, pay per click, GLS, Realtor, all the portals, all the different things that we you know partner with to, to generate, you know, radio, all the different things that we do. Um, but uh, we don't, as you can see in our, the, the last slide that, that we don't give listing appointments to tier two or lower, we only give listing to tier three and fours um, because the, the uh, listing is just a very sacred lead. Um, and so we're always going to give that to our, our A players. So this is Tina. Um, I see a difference here in Jordan. It looks like you're leading these uh, these tiers with production period, not a lead source or anything like that, like the, the Zillow club or whatever. You have spread across and they earn it by when they sell deals. Now we have something similar to that. However, that next structure is what Siri was talking about is the actual lead uh teams i guess for the different portals so it's cool that i can see two different things going on here um i'm sure there's bugs and there's greatness in either one of those um so I, i'm really curious how all this is playing out for everybody um because the you know making the deals is not it isn't healthy for an organization if you're customizing for everybody so i feel that if you're having to end up and i don't think siri is there yet but if if it were to happen where you're customizing for each individual, I think that maybe the system needs to be looked at and 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 um, tweaked, so you don't have to do so much of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you know we had a gal who sold like 24 homes in quarter between Q1 and Q2, like just absolutely crushed it. And obviously the market changed a lot this year and but she also took a bunch of vacations and all of a sudden she was in tier one by Q4. And 
I actually do coaching meetings with my tier ones and tier twos. And then I do another coaching meeting, my tier three and tier fours. And so we're having different conversations. One's trying to get everybody booted up. And another one's trying to help people manage the success that they're having. And, uh, and, and so this gal was now in tier one and I said, Hey, I want you still in three and four, like from a, I still want you in this coaching meeting because I know that you're technically here and you need to get out of here, but you're one of our top producers. So that was an adjustment I made because there was no value for her in that other meeting. She knows the business. She made some decisions. The market kind of smacked her a little bit. And so we made some adjustments. Yeah. And so speaking of adjustments, the other thing is, is like, like I said, you're building this. So what happens is you, you go at this with the best intentions. And I know for me, I, I meet with the leadership whenever we do anything. We also have an agent advisory within, we call it our AA group and we consult with them on things too. Um, but we fail also, like we try things and then it doesn't work or we try something and then we have to add on another layer because of what we created. So, you know, it's just, it's just part of really building this team structure out. Um, again, I come from, let's try to simplify this, but then have expectations from within, but there, there's really no right or wrong. There really is no right or wrong. We're just building our own journey with everything. So, and you guys, like I said, you're going to see that with all the different team leads that we bring in, they're going to run things completely different. And so what I'm excited for is I'm going to be learning from all of these people that are coming in like a total sponge. I'm just going to be like, what are you doing? Um, I love taking things and implementing them. That's my one of my superpowers is how can we actually do this? And so you guys, we're going to be every week bringing those people so that you can you can grab different nuggets and then create your own. And then likewise, some of you team leaders like, hey, Lana, you're going to be on, right? You're, hey, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be on with us and you're going to be leading this and showing us what you do. And so um, I'm just like really excited to be able. So for those of you on here, if, if any of you do run a team and I don't know you, um, reach out to me or reach out to Jordan and let us know. And then we can get you the link so you can plug in and, and be no, a guest. Just reach, just, just reach out to Siri. Actually me, yes, 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 me, I'm the- Remember, I'm, I'm only a visionary leader, I'm not organized. Um, <laughs> oh, Jordan, really? You're not organized? Like, oh, <laughs> we might share some of the same sentiment there. Hey, I'll, so keep, one, I'll keep one, the glue together. <laughs> one, one other thought, guys, I, I, uh, I started a mastermind in Denver with, with some of the top team leaders. Uh, like, I, I think collectively the 12 of us represent like over uh, like 15% of all transactions in Denver between 12 leaders, right? So it's a group, an amazing group of people. But uh, one of the things that, that has become really clear to me is all 12 of us are doing 12 different things. The only thing that matters at the end of the day, whether you're a team of two or a hundred is profit. So it's gonna be really easy to go, ooh, ooh look at these cool things that, that Siri and Jordan are doing or whoever the team leader is, profit. If it makes you money and it's efficient and you're happy, that's awesome. There's days where I go, hey, is my team of 40 the most profitable model I could have? Um, I sometimes think I could probably drop it to 10 people and be more profitable. But at the end of the day, I really, what makes me happy is investing in people. So that's why I keep doing it. So just keep in mind, profit first, profit matters. It's not size, it's not transactions, it's not GCI, it's not all of that because we did almost $6 million of GCI this year and we didn't keep enough profit. I'll just put it that way. All right, well, we're gonna, I've had, I'm looking at the chat. We're gonna get the slides out to you guys. Um, we'll also send you the recording. Um, and is there any other questions that you guys might have? Otherwise, I think Jordan, you have to go speak on stage, right? Yes. All right. Yes. We will wrap this up and we will see everybody next week. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Stay warm. Happy holidays. All right. Bye, guys.